Okay, so here I am then on the home page of our Firebase console. Here you can see I'm in the project overview section. Let's now set up our iOS and Android references, our package references in our application. So we might as well do that now uh, because this is the kind of thing you would be doing inside your application. So I'm just gonna now paste my package name in here because this is gonna be associated with this Firebase project. And I'm just gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call this one uh, digital brush like that. And I'm gonna keep everything else the same. I'm just gonna say a register app like that that's good that's all I need to do if I'm just going to now click the X here like that and I'm going to go back now to my project overview yeah good old Firebase I tend to change it on you uh, when you're not expecting it so I'm going to click on add app here so we've done the iOS one and we're going to choose now then the Android one here as well so let's just do the same thing as well just paste that in there and let's just give this then a name digital brush and just say register app and we are good I can just close that down there so that's good. We've got that set up. Let's now head back over to Fire, uh, to Flutterflow. I'm just going to head back into then the Firebase section here. And I'm just going to click on this option here to regenerate the config files. Now, everything is kind of like now uh, kind of set up in Firebase for me. I'm just going to kind of make sure that everything is in sync with the configuration of inside Flutterflow for Firebase. So that's just going to take a few minutes and uh, should get everything in sync for us. There we go, we're back, and you can see all of our errors have now disappeared. Hurrah, so that's the errors moved out. We now need to start going through and now looking at some of these particular warnings up here because there is gonna be some issues that we've now got with inside our application. We will try to spin this up now. Um, certain features of our application will not work, so we need to go through now and correct those. Um, there's a couple of little bugs in this little application as well, which we need to correct along the way as well. So um, that's good, let's now move on to the next bit. Okay, so here we are then on the widget tree part of Flutterflow. Let's now start correcting some of these warnings. So on the create account page, the first one that we want to do is associated with this create account button. So just with this selected, move over to the action flow editor, open up there, and you can see here we've got a little warning symbol up here. We've got a problem on this particular flow. Now the issue that we've got here is under the create account, and we've got this kind of navigate automatically uh, kind of toggled on. We actually need to turn that off. We don't want that to navigate automatically. Uh, we kind of want these further actions to kind of play out here. So I've just turned that off. That warning is now gone, which is great. So just close that down here. So we also need to do the same for the continue with the Apple. So just select that here, open up the action flow editor, and we've got the same problem just here, navigate automatically. Let's just turn that off there. Let's just close that and uh, gradually our warnings are being reduced. So let's now head over to then the sign in page. Let's go to where it says continue with Apple there, open up this here, open up the action flow editor, and then we'd likely to have the same issue here that's just coming up here. Let's just click on that, navigate automatically, and that has now been removed. Now, probably when this application was probably first developed, actually, these probably weren't actually issues, but I think as he, obviously as updates have come with Flutterflow, then nuances and issues have kind of appeared in the actual project. So um, but that's fine, quite straightforward ones to correct. So just close that there. So you can see we're now down to 10. Let's just have a look and see what else we've kind of got going on. Just scroll down here. So we've got a custom code issue here. So let's go and have a look at that one for just a moment here. Let's move over to the custom code here. And uh, it's talking, I think, specifically about uh, this get image ash, ash here. So you can see down here, we've kind of got this like little horrible sort of red triangles warning here that, um, that this particular dependency, okay, right. So this particular dependency is now kind of part of Flutterflow by standards. Actually, we don't really need it here. So this is kind of quite an old version actually of this dependency. So we can just kill this and kind of get rid of it. We don't actually need it. So once that updates, let's just hit the compile option here like that. Got an unknown error or oh, try compiling the game. So just going to leave that to complete. And then what we should then see here, we should see this as a, as a green tick. Um, we don't actually need that dependency here. So let's just wait for that to complete. There we go. Green tick is all appeared. We are good. We're gradually getting there. Let's have a look at some of the more uh, errors here. We're talking about Firestore rules here. So uh, yeah, let's have a look here. Let's click on Firestore rules. Let's just move down here and let's get these rules deployed. So just hit deploy there. Okay, that is fine. We're quite happy with that. Just by default here, just hit the deploy now. And then that should go away and we'll come back once that tick has been completed. Okay, so they are now all deployed. That is good. Let's go and have a look then at these sort of warnings if there's anything more that we can get rid of here. 
uh, we got ah the file store set up here so let's just click that in fact we can let's give this delete user references now uh, a redeployment here now that we've uh, uh, deployed some of these other uh, and we've done the configuration updates to uh, firebase as well so hopefully that should uh, work for us again Okay, brilliant. It looks like we are in a happy place. We've um, pretty well got, um, I think at this particular stage, everything as far as Firebase now completely set up with inside our Flutterflow application. So I don't actually think there's an issue now firing this particular application up. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the local run version of Flutterflow, because I've kind of been doing everything in the web-based version here. So I can then deploy this to then the iOS simulator, because that's how I like to test my applications now is using the simulators. Um, so let's give that a go and um, hopefully, fingers crossed, our application will fire up perfectly for us. So I've got my iOS simulator up and running. I'm back into the local run version. Um, if you're blinking, you probably missed it. You wouldn't have probably seen much difference in the web and this particular version here. But let's just get my devices here. This should find my iOS uh, simulator. There it is. Um, we've got the iPhone 15 Pro simulator running here. That's good enough. Just hit the plus here. Let's hit test. I'm going to leave that now to export the project. It's going to take probably quite a while for this to happen. This is the first time we've done this, and it's quite a quite a chunky project actually. So I'm going to leave that to sort of play out and hopefully that will deploy okay to the simulator and then we'll come back and we'll try uh, creating an account, signing in. Um, it won't do a lot else other than us being able to sign in, but at least uh, this will get ourselves up and running. Okay, so here we are then in the iOS simulator. The project has deployed first time, no problems at all. Yeah, there's a couple of assets that's not being displayed. We'll worry about that at a later stage. So let's hit the get started option. Let's uh, create an account. So I'm just going to put my email address in here, the digital pro, digital pro gmail.com. Let's create a password here. There we go. Hit create account. Now, fingers crossed this will work straight away. That's great. It's looking like it's uh, moved on to the next stage for us. So I'm just going to put in here, Steve. Uh, I'll just call myself Steve Digital. Uh, the digital bro like that. And let's have a look here. Now I can upload a profile picture. So let's, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the simulator. Let's just choose something from the gallery. Yeah, layer full access here. Let's just choose the waterfall. That is good, it's uploading the file. I'm um, hopefully, uh, if we've got our story set up, which we have correctly, because the image is now being stored, that's pretty good. Um, and we can hit just hit continue now. Let's see if this is creating for us. Yeah, we're on the onboarding now, that's lovely. Let's go next. And then let's say get started. And here we are, we're right off the bat into the application and we're now ready to start doing various things. And of course, there's no data in this particular application, uh, which is what you would expect. Um, and um, what's probably happened behind the scenes now with inside your Firestore database is that there's some sort of basic details have been set up, some user profile details have been set up. Um, we can go over and um, inspect that actually, and we'll do that um, right away because um, this is now up and running. This is where we want to leave the running application. The uh, the next uh, phase that we're going to start focusing on is getting open AI set up. We'll get that configured with inside this application. We can start actually generating these images. But let's um, head over to Firebase right now. Let's have a look and see what's been created inside our Firebase project. Okay, so here we are then back in the actual Firestore uh, project. Let's click on the build here. Let's go then down to the Firestore database here. Now in just a moment, we should see that reloaded. And there it is. We've got our, our kind of our album. This has kind of created this like a default album for us, for our user. We've got a reference to our user here. If I go to the users, you can see I've got some basic details here of myself. I kind of got my uh, my uh, sort of a photo URL of my profile image, which is in our, in our storage bucket. We'll go and check that in just a second. I've got my user user ID, got some, some basic profile details of myself, uh, got my default album. Again, all of this is all used inside the application to kind of uh, to kind of set various screens up and all that kind of stuff. And then here will be a list of all my albums, but I've only got one album at this moment by default. So that is looking pretty good. Now, if I go over to the storage, let's have a look and see what's being created over there. So there I've got this users kind of folder in here. I've got the user ID, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, go to uploads. And then here I've got my image that I've kind of uploaded from my application. So it uh, looks like Firestore is, uh, from, uh, from the most part, from what I can see here, is set up nice and correctly for us. Uh, so that's brilliant. Let's, as I said, move now on to the next part, and that is setting up OpenAI. So we can start now seeing this application come to life with generating these images. So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.
Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found that useful. Now, of course, if you are interested in Flutterflow and the no-code space in general, please do go and check out the Digital Pros No-Code Academy. I've got lots of sample applications, more video content, written articles, and there is a fantastic community there as well. So please do go and check that out. But of course, if you just want to stick on YouTube, no problem at all, please do subscribe. And of course, hit the notification bell, and then you'll be notified when new content drops. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.